Well, hello, Shoreline Church. I hope you had a great weekend of worship, whether you worshiped online or on campus. Uh, we had five services. I didn't have to preach five times. I preached once for online, and then we showed the same service again and again, and then preached twice on campus. But it was a great weekend, and wherever you were, I hope that you fell more in love with the Word of God, that your desire for God's Word is deepening. So this is your, this is your devotional for Tuesday, June 16th, and we're going to continue walking through the book of Psalms. And I'm going to read just another portion of Psalm 119. There's so much in this psalm, and it's really a, 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 a chapter in the Bible that's about the Bible. And so listen to the heartbeat about Scripture from Psalm 119. I'm going to read verses 9 through verse 16. And just ask yourself, does this reflect my heart, and could this be the way I express myself when it comes to God's Word? Psalm 119, beginning in verse 9. How can a young person stay on the path of purity. A lot of people are asking that question these days. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my lips I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and I consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. All these different words, your word, your decrees, your precepts, um, you know, your, your law, your statutes, all those are talking about the teaching of Scripture. And the psalmist just rejoices in the gift of God's word. So just a couple of thoughts for you as you walk into this new week. First, I love in verse 9, you know, how do you keep yourself on a path of purity? By living according to your word. Not just young people, but all people, but particularly the young. I want to encourage you with children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, younger people you influence. Direct them towards the word of God. Model a love for God's word. And help them get into this book that could change their lives and set their life on a great trajectory and path. And then in verse 11, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Can I encourage you to hide God's word in your heart, deep in your soul? Read scripture often, daily at least, maybe more than once a day. Just bring it to, and, and then commit it to memory so it's always in your mind and always in your heart. Bury it deep in your soul. And then I love in verse 14 where it says, I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. It says, following your word, God, brings me greater joy than having lots of stuff and lots of money because the psalmist understands that living in and knowing and walking in the word of God leads to the, the life that you long for, the life that you desire. More than stuff, living the way God calls you to live. And then finally, the last words of this little portion that we've read is I will not neglect your word. I hope that's your commitment and your prayer. And I wanna encourage you to pick a time and a place to read God's word each day, at least once a day, to open God's word and read it, or, or, or plug in and listen to it. But get God's word in your mind and get it in your heart. And would you just say, okay, each day at seven in the morning in the chair in my study, I'm gonna engage with God's word. Or each evening at nine o'clock at the dining room table, I'm gonna open God's word and read it. Do you know that if you actually declare you're going to do something and you declare a time and a place, you're 50% more likely to do it than just saying, I, gotta, I think I'm gonna do that thing. When you say it out loud and when you say at this time in this place, I am doing it, something happens in your mind and your heart. I think that God hears your voice when you declare that and the Holy Spirit empowers you. Will you pick a time and a place and open this book and walk close to the Lord? Lord, this is our prayer that we would not forget your word. We would not neglect your word. That we would grow to love your word and it would fill our minds and our hearts and transform our lives. God, thank you for giving us your word by your spirit. Let it come alive in our hearts. And we pray that we would be people who love your word, who follow your word, who walk in your presence. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you. I do want to encourage you, if you're doing at-home services, God bless you. You will have them at 8.30, 10, and 11.30 this coming Sunday. But if you're going to do services on campus, registration is now open. 
It'll be open for a, a few days, but it closes so that we know exactly the seating. So if you plan on coming on campus to one of the services, go online and register today. God bless you and have a great day.